Hello, it's Luke Michael Howard, PhD in clinical hypnotist and owner of Luke Gnosis Hypnosis. This video is entitled Seven Ways to Stay in the Now. Because mindfulness is all the big thing, power of now, being in the present. An interesting thing about being in the present, truly being in the now, not five minutes ago, not ten years ago, not one hour into the future, or a year into the future, but right here, right now, it's impossible for you to feel a negative emotion. Yeah, true story. If you're truly centered in the now, um, you can't have anxiety, you can't have fear, you can't have hate, you, you can't have anger in the now. Um, true story, try it. When you're truly centered in the now. So, um, tip number one, how to stay in the now. Because our mind's always, it's being pinged in a million different directions from social media to our cell phones, to going on the internet, to talking to people, to eating, to watching TV, what, play video games, whatever, whatever it is. It's been poured in a million different ways. One of the very first, first tips staying in the now is focus on your body. Body, focus on your body, not your head. Your head's gonna be doing this the whole time. The best you can ever do is uh, slow it down. Um, but focus on your body. If you find your mind is peeing off into thinking about things from the past or what you're gonna do five minutes from now, just focus on your body. Focus on what your feet are doing right now. Where are they? Are they on the ground like mine? Feeling a soft rug underneath? Barefooted? Are you standing? Are your legs crossed? How does that tension feel in the legs if they are crossed? What are your feet doing right now? Just focus on that. It's a very, very, very quick way. I just felt my own mind quiet a little bit then. When you just focus on the sensation of your body, one of the best ways is your feet. So tip number one to get you in the now, what are your feet doing right now? Focus on the sensation. Number two, take a big deep breath. In through your nose, all the way into your diaphragm, your belly button, and then breathe out. Yes, every school out there, wherever it be, yoga, hypnosis, meditation, whatever you want, they always tell you, breathe. You've heard it a million and one times. It's not original. But a lot of people that I meet, and I used to fit into this category, is we, we, we breathe, but we barely breathe. We breathe into our chest, and we end up triggering that fight or flight response a lot of times. So we end up having a lot more stress and anxiety in our life. When all you do is if you just stop breathing from here into there, and you start to breathe in your belly button, and you allow your belly button to expand, and you take about twice as long to exhale as it did to inhale, it starts to root you in the now. Because that breath, and you're not thinking about the breath you had 10 minutes ago, or your next breath, it's this breath right now. So tip number two, breathe, breathe deeply into your diaphragm. Tip number three, focused attention or focused awareness. What do I mean by that? What well, times in meditation you're asked to focus on a body sensation uh, or, or focus on the void, focus on the nothing, focus on the gap in between things. Um, so I'm going to teach you now, step three is actually focus on the gap in between things, to be in and out. What does that mean? Well, if you're walking, you're in motion actively down the street. You're focused on the gap between people, the gap between buildings, the gap between you and the top of the building, uh, the gap between the, the cars, um, the gap between the top of the building and the sky. You're focusing on the gap, the space is the better word, in between people, in, be, in between buildings, in between um, objects, if you will. Because what that does is it helps to pull you out of, again, thinking stuff that happened in the past or think of things that may happen, and it puts you right back where you are now. So focus as you're walking down the street, or even if you're sitting at home, focus on the gap between things. The gap between, I'm now looking at my light, shade, my little lamp, and my fan. There's, there's, there's a gap there. And just focusing on that gap has a lovely stealing, um, stealing um, sensation on your mind and in your body. So focus on the gap between things. That's number three. 
Number four, focused awareness. What does that mean? I was going to do this with number four, with number three, but I've changed it to number four. Oftentimes in meditation you're asked to focus on a mantra, uh, or you're focused, asked to focus on the breath, or an object. In hypnosis, oftentimes when I'm working with people, one of the best definitions I found of hypnosis is focused awareness on the situation you're working on. So if the uh, client is coming to see me about stopping smoking, that's what we're focusing on. Um, they will still be aware of all these other things that are going on, but they'll be going on in the periphery where they're focusing on solutions. We are together on helping them quit smoking. If, if it's people that come in that have a lot of anxiety, we're not focusing on the anxiety because you're, you're stuck in the problem if you're doing that. Uh, we're focusing on, on, on uh, tranquility of uh, calmness, of centeredness in people. Um, but just, just, just focus, because you, when you focus on one thing, yeah, there's still going to be other things going on in the periphery, but it starts to center your mind. It's almost like your mind's like a light bulb that has 100 watts. So all this energy is coming out of it, but it's not particularly powerful. Whereas if you take that same 100 watts and you put it down to like a laser beam, like about a centimeter thick, that same 100 watts could cut through a one inch uh, piece of steel essentially and make a hole in that um, it's the difference between aware and being aware of everything and the, the awareness of just zeroing in on something to have more power more focus that's number four um, number five this is a big one how to be in the moment I often teach this with, with a lot of clients that suffer from great anxiety um, panic attacks uh, stress and that's what I call peripheral vision or hack allow as the Hawaiians call it in the Hawaiian spirituality of HUNA or as they call it in neurolinguistic programming NLP uh, the learning state and essentially what this is is you sit down and you focus on something uh, kind of above you what I'm looking at right now is where my wall intersects with the ceiling I'm keeping my head still but my eyes are looking where the wall meets the ceiling that's called throw your vision, so focusing on one spot, that's what most people do all the time and that's a recipe for getting yourself stressed or anxious. What you do from there, having your head facing forward but your eyes facing that spot just above your eyebrows if you will, you then start to expand your awareness. So you can see Tiger coming in right there. She is a glory hog. You're aware of what's to the side of you, all the way down and even potentially bringing your awareness to from 180 to 360 degrees behind your head. Now what I do to stop looking like a complete maniac is I bring my eyes down. So I can look at this camera right now but I'm aware of Tigra here, I'm aware of the window here, I'm aware of the table in front of me, the floor below me, my laptop to my right. I'm seeing all these things, yet I'm just looking forward, but I'm taking in everything at once. When you're in this place, you're taking in everything at once, and it's impossible for stress or anxiety to be present at the same time. Now you can snap out of it like that, and you can go back into that world full of anxiety and that world full of stress. But what you need to do is remember, focus on that spot, bring your eyes, allow your peripheral vision to be aware of what's to the right, what's to the left, 180 degrees and bring that awareness all the way around the back and sometimes it takes some practice to do that bit, almost like you've got an eyes, eyes in the back of your head and to be in that place right there you can walk around, you can function in the world quite happily but you cannot have a negative emotion, it's kind of crazy but I urge you to do it. So that's tip number five and how to stay in the now, stay in the present. Number four, that's not number four, we did number four a long time ago. Number six, how to stay in the now. I don't know if you've got a pet, like a cat, I've got two, Mr. B and Tiger. I don't know if you've got a dog, a turtle, a lizard, a fish. I don't know, maybe none of those. Maybe you need to go to the petting zoo. But the interesting thing about animals, specifically cats, is they vibrate. When they purr, they vibrate at a certain level, a certain decimal level, um, which has been proven to heal bones, that the way that bones heal is the same vibrational frequency as a cat that's purring. And there's an interesting thing, oftentimes um, I have known um, past clients who were prescribed by a psychologist 
or doctors to, to actually go and get a dog or to get a cat to have someone else there not just for the company but there's a weird healing effect of it and I think I'm not sure about dogs so much because I don't have any they slobber too much but they're friendly but with cats I know that that vibration um, can actually help to heal you I know it sounds crazy I know it sounds a bit woo woo um, and I generally don't believe in that stuff but I, I've read the neuroscience on it and I've felt the effects on it so tip number six is go get yourself an animal but not just for Christmas for life and love them but just actually taking that moment to like forget about the cell phone forget about what you're doing and just being there with your cat being there with your animal and just being present with them and their shenanigans that they get up to it's beautiful not just beautiful for you but it's beautiful for the animal and having that connection of healing that trauma of that stress of that anxiety that you might have so number six is if you don't already have an animal go to your friend's house who might have an animal date someone who's got an animal or go to the zoo or I don't know go pet a nice happy healthy dog that uh, doesn't have rabies in the street or a cat that is nice and pleasant um, because they have an amazing effect on uh, healing you and, and actually keeping you in the moment um, of good feelings. So that's number six, how to stay in the present. Number seven, final one, final one, seven things to keep you in the moment. Number seven, switch off the cell phone, close the diary, switch off the TV, turn off the wild and crazy music that your kids are listening to, stop eating, stop thinking of a million and one things and just be. Just be. Whatever you are, just be. If you're sitting, sit. If you're standing, stand. Just be. In that moment we do so much to distract ourselves with music, TV, porn, internet, sex, sugar, drugs. Talk, 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 all this information coming in all the time and, and in the world. None of us have been more unhappy than we are right now. Stop the sound, stop the noise and just be in silence for a bit. Now some of you might be a bit scared to do that and for the ones that are scared to do that I urge you to do it the most because you need it the most and yes yeah, some uncomfortable stuff might come up and guess what? it will also pass it will pass just be, just be in silence, be okay being in silence and not worried about how or if I complete this so that's the seven things right there watch this video again I'm not saying you need to be perfect take one of these principles for a week run with it and next week do another one do the second one the next week do the third one there's seven ways right there to overcome stress anxiety tension ain't gonna cost you any money you don't even need to hire me as a hypnotist you don't even have to come to one of my talks you don't have to buy one of my products just do it I'm telling you doing a video it's free and it will have a profound change in your life and it might be uncomfortable for a bit guess what you've probably been uncomfortable or you've not even known you've been uncomfortable because all this is going on all the time stop it stop the nonsense stop the noise this has been seven ways to live in the now I've been Luke Michael Howard the hypnotist and owner of Luke Gnosis Hypnosis always believe